Rangers, just before we start this review, just want to let you guys know that Arnez and I have another channel called The Geek Chess, where we've been going over anime reviews on Monday, we've been going over Godzilla films on Friday, but also doing updates for this channel over there. So if you guys want to keep in the know-how with what's going on in this channel, definitely recommend going to check out our other channel. Also, we're posting some toy news if there's anything I think you guys would be interested in over there. And also have my G-Fest experience over there. So if you guys would be interested in any of that, please go help support us by going to subscribe over to the Geek Chest. Link in the description below. And now, on to the review. Hey Rangers, welcome to Super Important Views. My name is Steve, and today we'll be going over the Kaido Sci-Fi Revolt Tech Gamera 1967. This is the version that was from Gamera vs. Gauss, which I actually have the other figure to go over with this guy. But for this video, we're going to primarily go over the Gamera here, which we're going to be doing this review over the Indominus Rex. If you guys watch our ch other channel, The Geek Chess, I previewed that figure slightly on that channel. But I haven't really got to mess around with it too much yet, so we're going to go over another GFS acquired action figure today. And I merely picked up this figure because I don't actually have an OG gamer in my collection and I've been really wanting to get one. And I've heard very good things about the Revolt Tech line. So without further ado, for the packaging, my lights don't do it any favors. Because <laughs> as of right now, the light reflects off this package stupidly bright. But for the most part, it's just a very blood red background. Get a nice image of the figure inside the packaging on the front here. Pretty much gives you all the information you need to know right here on the front of the packaging. For the top of the packaging, literally the exact same thing. Side, another nice image of Gamera right here. It looks really nice. Other side of the packaging, just gives you a little bit of information that I can't actually read about, but I think it just tells you about how the Revolt Deck joints work right here for the most part. For the back of the packaging, just tells you pretty much everything you get inside of the packaging. Shows you some of the stuff that it can do. Looks really nice. And what's also really cool about this, other than you get the flying camera, is that you can actually open this up to see the figure inside the box. Which this actually makes for a really awesome display because you even get to see the film right here that he comes from. Also get another image of Gauss right there. Also shows you literally everything you get inside of the packaging. So this actually works for a really awesome display piece. Like I almost just want to leave them inside the packaging the way it is. Also comes with a Revo chip, which I don't actually know what that is, but at least it's 10 points. And on the bottom of the packaging, just some Lego mumbo jumbo. So let's get this guy open up out of his cardboard prison. All right, so now that we have Gamera open up out of his cardboard prison, first we're gonna go over some of his accessories, starting with his flamethrower breath, which looks awesome. Really love the shade that they got going there where it's a lot of nice oranges and reds and yellows blending in together to really make this nice fiery effect. Looks freaking awesome. And what's kind of cool too is that unlike the SH Monster Arts figures where usually these kind of effects come with a stand, this figure is actually not really that big. So for the most part, all you really got to do to attach this to our camera is just take your camera figure Inside of the mouth here, you guys will notice that there is a peg hole right at the back of it. Then you just take this in, insert it right into the hole. Pretty easy to do once you get it lined up. And then BAM! You got Gamera Flamethrower Fire Breath just ready to attack everyone. Aww. But for the most part, it does stand there very well. Looks freaking awesome. Awesome. I'm actually pretty impressed with this accessory piece overall. And then next we have his display stand for when he's going to be in flight mode, which we're going to start with this. Which what you do is you got your little peg right here, which you got two of them, but we primarily want to use this one for his display stand. And what you're going to do, peg hole right here, insert it right onto the peg, which takes a little bit of effort because it is a pretty tight squeeze overall, but just apply a little pressure down. Sits in there very well. And also comes with a articulated joint for the stand because we're going to be taking off one of Gamera's side panels to put him on for his uh, UFO form. And what's cool is too is that this is kind of on a ratchet joint so it is actually articulated though mine is super stiff. But uh, there we go now it's moving. It's on this really stiff ratchet joint right here so when it's going to be holding Gamera in a position you don't really have to worry about shifting up and down and sliding because it has this really solid ratchet joint. And what you do is you just take one of these pegs, insert it into the peg hole here. Kind of going to be saying peg a lot in this review. Goes in there really easy and then also you get this tiny little peg for his little display which for the life of me I cannot, and I repeat, cannot get that on that pig right there. 
I will be right back after I use a hair dryer on this. All right, so after returning from trying to use the hair dryer, is not gonna work for me because I don't know why, but it just seems like that little peg is just slightly too big to insert into this peg right here. So actually, and I don't know anywhere else that this would really sit because it kind of seems like this would be used for display. It's not gonna stay on camera and it's just not really anything like, eh? <laughs> so if you guys could let me know in the comment section below if this is actually supposed to go anywhere else. Because otherwise I might be drilling that hole just slightly bigger just to, so it can sit on there better. But for right now, if you guys want to use this and have the same problem, you just sit on there nicely and you're good to go. And then for his next accessory, we have the jet flames right here, which what these are for is for each of his limbs, you can remove them and replace them with these, which is supposed to help replicate his uh, spinning UFO form or just when he wants to use his hind legs as more jet propulsion, which is really sweet because again, I kind of really would want something like this for my original gamer figure anyways, because that's definitely the more iconic things that Gamera does. So it's cool that they gave us these uh, little accessory pieces to be able to replicate that. And what you get is you get four of these guys in total, which overall, from what I've noticed, they all look pretty much the same, just the paint jobs are slightly different on them. But they all have this nice white here at the base, and then once you get more towards the top with the flames here, you get this more baby blue color, which looks really good. Maybe I'd like to see you know, some translucent plastic here though. Would have been really nice, kind of like something like what we got with the flame effect here where even this isn't really all that translucent. But like something we get with the Monster Arts figures as well where it just shows up very nicely and has this more clear look to it. I think that would have looked a little bit better, but this painted version isn't too bad as well. It actually has a lot of very nice molded details on here. And also this pretty nice collector's case to actually store your coins in. Because it pretty much just, uh, for the instructions, they don't really tell you what any of this stuff really is actually supposed to be for. So I'm going to assume it's for this because it's not like you can really hold the flame pieces or anything in here. Or even like when you're taking off the limbs and stuff, like, yeah. So more or less, I imagine this is mainly just for the coins here. But it's pretty cool that we come with a little case for this anyway, so we're not losing the coin. And for the final accessory, we have this. <laughs> Which actually what this is for is for when you have him in his UFO form. What you can actually do, which I'll show you guys in just a second, is you can put Gamera's head inside of his body. And this is mainly supposed to be sitting on the top portion right here to kind of just replicate him hiding inside of his shell, which overall looks really cool. It has a lot of very nice molded details. It looks pretty sweet overall. And then next we're gonna go over Gamera himself before I start putting all the accessory pieces on him, just to show you guys what he looks like fully assembled as of right now, which he looks freaking awesome. Really love the details that they got going on here. Very reminiscent of the 1967 film, which this guy is from Gamera vs. Gauss which really has a lot of very nice details on it, especially for it being a little bit of a smaller scale figure, which I'll have some comparisons with him with the SC's Monster Arts figures line. But the head does look awesome. Zooming a little bit more just so you guys see the details. For his eyes look really good. Has this really nice yellow shade here with the iris having this nice white outline with black on the inside. Looks very close to the actual film. The details underneath his eyes look really nice. His teeth are this nice white shade and then his tusks are more of a bone color. Even has some details here on the inside of the mouth with this nice flesh stone. For his body, very blocky, basic, very turtle looking. Very iconic for this Gamera figure. For the back of his shell, looks really good as well. It has these plates that kind of lift up a little bit so they have a little bit of a point and edge to them. So he's just kind of very prickly on the back. But overall, it looks really good. The details on this figure are actually very impressive. And then the same with, you got your Gamera arm right here and his little hands, which are over for the positioning, which is kind of getting into the articulation a little bit, but it's just like, he's always looking like he's kind of ready to give you a hug. <laughs> he's just like the most lovable Gamera ever. And just, oh man. And then for his legs, which is, where I start to kind of complain about this figure a little bit is where you can start to see the joints very well. Which you can see right here is where you got the one ratchet joint right here on the inside of the thigh. So looking at it from the front, doesn't look too bad, but once you start rotating it, you just start kind of noticing them, especially on the inside of the thighs. And the same with the leg plates here, like, there just seems to be a decent amount of gapping, which you can actually fix a little bit, but then it's like, now you got some gapping here on the legs, and it's just like, 
takes a lot of finessing and it's one thing about these Revoltic figures that I noticed from a lot of the pictures, which was that a lot of these joints just kind of show up very well on these guys, especially with the all the ratchet joints when you're moving them around. Like on the SH Monsters figures, you get a lot of these segmented plastic, which you can fix, it just takes a little bit of shifting, but that's because they just have so much articulation on these guys. Which, for these guys to compete with them, there's a lot of these ratchet joints on here, which helps to keep them in position, which I actually really like. But then again, it also just helps to show up a lot of these parts. Kind of like if you guys see my review of the Square Enix uh, Colonial Marines Alien Spitter. He has this kind of same issue where you can just, the ball joints are very noticeable on this guy. Which is really my only major complaint right now. And that, and if you want to have his head down, there's a... A lot of gapping right there. But overall, the legs look really nice as well. Have a lot of very nice wrinkle details here, which is very reminiscent of the suit. Got his little toes right here, which you think these things would be webbed, but I guess not. And then for the nails on his feet, are this nice gray color. Same with here on the hands. Overall, his body is this very dark green color. Very, uh, I don't want to say navy green, but pretty darn close. <laughs> And then you got his ginormously long Gamera tail, which... Oh man, the ball joints. Then we get to his articulation, which he actually has a decent amount of range of motion, especially for him being pretty much a turtle, which is a heck of a look up about that high up, which is pretty crazy. Like you can get him into these like more crawling position, which is actually really cool. You can also move his head down about that far. His mouth can move up and down. Head can look not really too much to the left and to the right, which is sad. You pretty much only get the shift here at the upper part of the neck, so... You can look, but it's just more like kind of cockeyed it angles. It's kind of, kind of weird, a little bit disappointing there. Like I kind of wish it could rotate a little bit more. And then for his shoulders, they can rotate all the way around. And then for these ratchet joints, which is kind of weird because when you want to use move his arms for articulation, you kind of got to pay attention where the joint's at because you'll see right here, I can move it up and down at this angle. And you have to kind of rotate it to get it to fix to exactly how you want it. Like his arm can move up about yay far down about that far, which I kind of worry about the peg snapping when I'm doing this if I mess it up. But it can move down about that far. And it's just a little bit frustrating because to try to line it up to get it to look right, you got to rotate the upper part of the, the arm right here. To get it to line up with the ratchet joint how you want it, otherwise it starts kind of looking a little funky. So you mainly just got to rotate it so that you can get it to fit for the articulation. Which is my main complaint about his the whole articulation setup. It's just it's kind of weird, especially with the way they got his arms kind of positioned on here on the shell. It just makes moving his arms up and down a little bit more of a tedious task than anything. But for his elbow joints, can straighten up about that far. Bend in about that far, which is actually pretty crazy. Then for his hands, can move up about that far, back about that far. Can rotate all the way around. Has a little bit of a pivot side to side. Nothing too crazy. For his legs, right here has the exact same problem as the shoulder area is there. Where you just got to make sure you line up the ratchet joint when you're moving it. But his leg can move down about that far, up about that far. Rotate all the way around. And then it's the same if you want to go a little bit side to side, just... A little bit of uh, messing around with the ratchet joint here to get the move how you want it. But for his knees, can bend in about that far. Straighten up about that far. Which you got really hear those nice ratchet joints. It's one thing I actually really like about these figures. So you don't have to worry about like the joint loosening up over time. And then for his feet, can move up about that far. Down about that far. Also can rotate all the way around. Then for his tail, can move that far to the left. That far to the right, can pop off this thing pretty easy. Straighten that back up. Can move forward about yay far. Can go back about that far. You get a lot of posability with the tail here because you got literally a joint here, 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 and right here for the tippy. And then each of these can also rotate around, which is really nice, gives you a lot of posability. And they pretty much can all do 360 motions. And then next we will get him into his flying forms. Which first we're going to start with his uh, legs being his jet propulsion. So what you're going to want to do is you just literally just pull the legs out. Pretty easy to do. You just mainly just want to make sure you're coming at a downward angle. Like so. 
And don't worry, it's sometimes that, like right there, that this part might pop off on you, which is mainly just grab it at the joint, make sure to pull down, pretty easy to do. Just make sure you're not going at a cockeyed angle, like, please don't try to pull it out when it's like this. Might not work in your advantage. So you wanna make sure to keep it straight and just grab as close as to the little joint right here as possible. And finally, what you're gonna do is make sure to remove the tail exactly the same way as you took off the legs. Just pull it out of the little pig hole right there. And then you take your little fire accessories, insert them into where you had your leg joints, and bam, pretty much done here. And uh, overall, looks pretty cool. Because there's not really a whole lot of ways of getting this to kind of swoosh behind him a little bit more. Because there's always going to be that weird little backwards angle. Because mainly look at it from the side. Looks freaking awesome. From the front angle, kind of looks a little goofy. From the other side angle, looks awesome. So primarily if you're going to be having a display on your shelf kind of at angles, he looks really good. And then getting him onto the display stand, you can pretty much... Uh, insert it right into there so you're gonna pretty much be taking this and putting it essentially right into his pooper but anyways you just insert that right into there a little bit of tight fit giggity what you get in you just bend it upwards and bam our camera is now flying which uh we're gonna get him a little bit more upright and look a little bit more cool but overall looks really good like surprisingly, he's actually really high off the ground. Actually, uh, I'll go grab one of my monster figures right now. Like here we have him next up, uh, Big Boss Gamera 2. Which actually on the stand sits up a little bit higher than him right now. Which uh, once I get him off the stand, you can already kind of tell that there's definitely a size difference between the two. But he does sit up off the ground pretty decently in my opinion. And again, when you have him at angles, looks freaking sweet. It's just from the front, doesn't work quite as well, like he's kind of like drifting, like he's like Rrr! And the only way they really could have fixed this is they gave us some extra little flame pieces to go into here, which I can totally understand. People gotta make money. But it just, it works pretty much well for the effect, but I don't know how much if I'm going to be displaying like this in my collection. And then moving on to the UFO form, what you're gonna wanna do is take off his arms, which is pretty easy to do. Again, exactly just like how we did the legs, you just want to make sure you're coming at it from an upward angle. Unlike the legs, you want to come at it downward. Here you want to go upward. And then next for the coolest part, we're going to remove our gamma head. Which you're going to want to make sure, straighten up the head, or at least makes it a little bit easier for me because I don't remember which way angle I got to pull it at. And you just want to pull at an upward angle, pop the head right off the joint. And then we're going to take our gamma body, we're going to pop it open. Kind of reminds me of those old Ninja Turtle toys where you got like all the storage in here. And what we're going to want to do is take our gamma head and insert it right into this peg hole right there. Zoom in real quick so you guys can see it. Right there inside the body is where you're going to be wanting to insert our gamma head into. Which, all you got to do is just make sure you line it up and it might help if you actually had the peg joint bending down a wee bit. Because you're kind of going to want to come at it from a downward angle. And then you just pretty much just push it right into there. And then you just want to make sure that it's in all the way. Our gamer head is flush up into the body. Bring the front of the shell back up. And now gamer is enclosed and looking adorable. And then next we're going to take our weird little skin flap here. Insert it where we had the gamer head. Then you just make sure to push it in there. Line it up. Now you got gamer's nose kind of sticking out from his neck hole right there. Kind of weird. And then you just take the rest of your flame bits. Insert them where we had the arms originally. And then afterwards, it's pretty much just adjusting the flames to get it to look how you want it. Which is about like so. You really need to get this guy on like a string or something. Just be like. And then next one, you're going to be wanting to attach him onto a stand and not using this peg over right here. You actually get two options, which on the sides of the shell, you can actually pop these little panels off, which might take a little bit of nail here. But you essentially just get your nail in there, pop off the little peg here, comes off really easy. Pretty tiny little piece. Make sure you don't lose this. Might actually be a good reason to keep this bad boy around. And also he has another one on this side too. If you guys wanted to use this other side as an option, which this side is being a pain in the butt. 
I haven't actually popped off this panel yet. There we go. Also got an extra option here as well. Then you grab your stand, insert it right into the pig hole there. And again, really stiff. For the most part, it doesn't feel like it's gonna be going all the way in. It goes in about that far for me anyways, without going to grab the hair dryer. And then using our stand here, we have Gamera in UFO form, which overall looks really sweet as well. I think they did a pretty good job at kind of replicating his whole spinning factor with the flames kind of swooshing around him. Might have been nice to maybe seen a little bit more like elongated pieces or maybe even if they could have set up maybe like one piece that kind of just hooked into all of the little pig joints and then just overall made that nice swirling effect all by itself. I think this does a really good job at still attempting to replicate that though. Like... The way it sits right now, you can definitely tell what is trying to happen here, which is him doing his little spinny UFO move, which overall looks really cool. Definitely something I would actually be considering to keep on my shelf like this, because overall, I think it looks really cool and bringing it in for a little bit of a closer look. But overall, I think it looks really cool though. You can see here the swooshes really do make this nice kind of circular pattern. Again, I kind of wish there was a little bit of a tighter formation though, because it kind of sprays out a little bit like I'm pretty sure I could use this thing as a throwing star and just whip it at people and <laughs> cause some considerable damage please don't go do that but for what they were trying to do I think this makes for a really cool display option like you again you can see camera's little nose sticking out and you give him lip to the flap and see him on the inside pretty neat stuff there overall like the one main thing though is that he's supposed to be spinning but it's kind of weird to see the shell just kind of in this stationary position which there isn't really any way of fixing that like you're, there's no way you're able to have these him all spinning around but i kind of want to get him spinning maybe grabbing my little turntable <laughs> oh man this isn't gonna work try to get him to spin around and look good not gonna do it <laughs> i don't know maybe you're kind of cool to if you guys had him like on a little display though and have him just like spinning around or something that might be actually a neat little option Again, you can kind of position these to get them into how you want. Might be sticking up a little bit. Kind of looks like a weird little squid monster now. But trying to get them to spin around and look cool. It might be a cool little option to actually, like, if you have, like, one of those, like, spinning displays, having it set up like this. But for the most part, I really love that they gave us the accessory for this. And again, probably just going to be having my camera just standing on the shelf normally. So for some quick comparisons, we're going to go over actually what I would say is the most important comparison. Here he is with the SH Monster, it's Gamera 1996 from Gamera 2. Which what I want to do here is actually compare them to, if you guys want to be picking a Revolt Tech Up or the SH Monster, it's Gamera Up. Which, I don't want to say this is quite a fair comparison because I should be comparing these guys with the Revolt Tech Gamera 2. But I sadly don't have that figure so we're going to go with these guys since I got them here. And what I'm going to compare these guys on to make it a little bit fair is overall size, articulation, and what they come with. Which, for the most part, I'm gonna say the SH Monster Arts version wins, because the articulation of this guy is freaking awesome. The only real problem here is for his tummy right here. I wish the gimmick hit a little bit more. But overall, his articulation is very solid and the joints hide very well in the SH Monster Arts version. While on him, you can see the ball joints a little bit and his arms and legs aren't quite as fluid as I would like them to be. And you get a definitely larger action figure with the SH Monster Arts version. But he actually wins a little bit in terms of accessories because he comes with slightly more. Because he comes with his jet form, plasma fireball, and a little stand from the flan. Well, he comes with stand, fire breath, and four uh, flame effects for his UFO form and thruster form. And a coin and a little carrying case. So overall, he actually comes with slightly bit more. But I'm still going to say that this guy is the slightly better figure between the two. But then again, you're also paying that in the price because this guy is generally about $20 more than what our Revolt Tech Gamera is here, which I got him for 50 bucks, and that was like everything. He was seven, about $70 before shipping, so you definitely pay for it in this guy. Like, it's kind of like comparing SH Monsters to NECA, where it's pretty much you get what you pay for. But what I actually really love here is with the Revolt Tech version is overall, I love the scale between the two because it kind of makes like a nice little timeline in your shelf where you get the smaller Showa Gamera and the larger Heisei Gamera, which looks really awesome. Like, I'm actually glad SH Monsters hasn't really put out an old Gamera figure, because I imagine you'd definitely be a little bit taller and just 
wouldn't really work quite as well for me, at least in terms of displaying it on my shelf. So I actually recommend if you guys have uh, the accessory sponsor it's Gamera and love Gamera, it's actually a nice little selling point to pick up this guy because it just looks awesome next to him. And here's with the NECA's Anchorage Attack Gypsy Danger and the Flying Otachi. And here's with the SC's Monster, it's Godzilla 1964 and the NECA Godzilla 1984-85. And here's some Japanese vinyls with the Gamera movie version from Gamera 3, which you can only get this guy if you went and saw him in Japanese theaters. And Legion from Gamera 2 Advent of Legion. And here is with the Revolte Gauss 1967 still in the packaging. Review coming sometime in the near future. So overall with the Revolte Gamera 1967, I actually think this is a pretty solid figure. Really love the details on this guy. The amount of accessories he comes with is very impressive. And the only real hindrance for this entire figure is his articulation, which isn't horrible, but it does take some getting used to. Which mainly is just the body type for this figure and being a turtle just kind of makes articulating him pretty difficult. But once you get the hand of it, it's pretty easy to use. And overall his movements are very well represented from the film. And the one thing I love about this figure with him being slightly smaller than what I'm used to is that he actually works really well with the SH Monster as line. It makes for a nice representation of that character in that collection. So if you guys have been wanting a nice show of Gamera to go with your SH Monsters figures in your collection, or just love Gamera in general, then I definitely recommend picking up this figure because you need Gamera to come and save your day. So what do you guys think of Gamera? Have you guys seen Gamera vs. Gauss or is the Big G just more your thing? Please let us know in the comments. We'll have closer pictures of this guy on Facebook if you want to click the link in the description below. Help us defeat those kaijus by hitting that like button, subscribe to become a ranger today, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. He's like, <laughs>